June 2003, at an undisclosed location in the city. Once again, Takeshi Kaneshiro has returned to the world of Onimusha to reprise the role of the hero, Samanosuke Akechi. Listening intently to the director's instructions, this serious face no longer belongs to Takeshi the actor. He has already become Samanosuke, noble warrior from medieval Japan. In the first game, Onimusha Warlords, Takeshi Kaneshiro played a character in a video game, something no one had ever attempted before. One of the reasons he was able to pull it off so convincingly was because he loves playing video games so much himself. The recording session is back on track. With his fine acting skills, Takeshi Kaneshiro is able to breathe life into the Samanosuke character. ここ Everyone in the studio is drawn in by his passionate performance. He never breaks his concentration. And with that, the recording session is over. Finally, a relaxed expression. Samanosuke has returned to Takeshi Kaneshiro, the actor. Thanks to his work today, the game is one step closer to being complete. Now, let's take a look at the final product. July 2003. French movie star Jean Reno arrives for his voice recording session, marking a new page in the Onimusha trilogy. Gee. He arrives in a cheerful mood. With his lines already memorized, he wastes no time getting down to business. The session progresses smoothly. He works with the director and the production team, striving for a perfect performance. Philippe, il faut partir. Mais non. No, I won't let you Viens, viens. Come toi Quoi, une illusion d'optique? Euh, ouais, parce que je pensais, tu veux pas que je dise avant, euh, arrête tes salades. No, bof. This veteran actor exudes the same presence in a small voiceover session as he does acting in a blockbuster film. Henri, Henri. Ça va? Now, let's take a look at the finished footage. Philippe, il faut partir. No, laisse-moi. Va-t'en, Jacques. Mais non, non, je vais pas te laisser là. Accroche-toi. Allez, viens. Viens. Next, we go to another place somewhere in Paris. Here, we will see the real Jacques Blanc come to life before our eyes. Here is Jean Reno in his motion capture suit. His goal was to immerse himself completely in the world of the game. Jean Reno plays the game as his character, Jacques Blanc. 
He is recreating the character in his mind as he watches. He knows how he has to play it. And so the motion capture filming begins. His performance is captured on the computer, and we witness the moment when Jean Reno becomes Jacques Blanc. He finds it hard to contain his excitement. He had a lot of fun today, and it showed. When it comes to his work, Jean Reno never compromises. His goal is to create something that will touch everyone that sees it. This is true of all his various film work, as well as this extraordinary game. He has a message for gamers everywhere. Ceux qui vont jouer à Nimusha 3 au Japon, ils vont faire un voyage dans le temps. Ils vont partir de France et vont partir de France aujourd'hui jusqu'au vieux Japon où il va y avoir des monstres et des samouraïs. Allez-y, tuez ces monstres. Moi, je vais venir. This time around, the development team is creating an opening movie that is indeed fitting for the finale of this spectacular series. Here, two very special men who are at the center of this creative endeavor make their way to the studio. Acting as director this time around is Takashi Yamazaki. His impressive body of work is garnering a lot of attention in the Japanese film community. And here is action choreographer Donnie Yen, who knocked the socks off the world with his superhuman fencing skills in the hit movie, Hero. <laughs> With a production staff that rivals the best blockbuster movies, this collaboration between Japan and Hong Kong will be more than just an opening movie. In the studio, English, Cantonese and Japanese words fly around as artists from Hong Kong and Japan interact. <laughs> this diversity is only fitting, as the objective is to take the world by storm with this monumental computer graphic experience. The languages being spoken may be different, but their creative energies are all on the same page. In rehearsal, oohs and ahs abound as the actors from Hong Kong perform some amazing feats. These are Chinese fencing champions. Very few people in the world can pull off stunts like these with such precision. The opening sequence is literally non-stop action, made possible by the exciting ideas of Donnie Yen. 
Here he rehearses one of his ideas for everyone. The CG technology used to make this a reality is on par with the best Hollywood has to offer. Miniature background models have been carefully created. They are filmed in 35mm and combined digitally with the CG characters. This method is very common in Hollywood, but is relatively new to the Japanese movie industry. The scale of these models is different than what you might imagine a miniature to look like. Even though they're at one-sixth scale, they are still rather large. The team shoots the background with special miniature cameras, only a few of which exist in Japan. As they go, they test each shot with other graphic images that they have created. They will accept nothing short of perfection. The digital combining techniques are also pure Hollywood. If the lighting is off, even slightly, the whole effect is ruined. To ensure perfection, they're using specially designed software and have invited one of the industry's top digital specialists to help. Working with Mr. Kurosawa from Robot Communications, renowned for his work in CG and film, has been an honor, and his expertise has made all of this possible. Many careful discussions like this were held with the director to work out the acting and the artistic direction. And so, in this unprecedented endeavor, an outstanding team from Japan and Hong Kong has joined forces for one purpose, to create the most extraordinary CG movie ever imagined. You can't have an action movie without wire stunts, and this is their specialty. That doesn't change the fact that they are attempting some very dangerous moves. Even for the best in the world, care and attention are required at every moment. And now, 
for the climax of the day's shooting. The scene has Somanosuke and his rival Garaganto facing off head to head. It's clear that they are making more than just the opening movie of a video game. Their aim is to make a complete film, a film that stands on its own merits. With that, the filming is over. Today, the merging of different languages, different cultures, and different styles has opened up a whole new world. While the finished product is only six minutes long, the dedication needed to make it possible matches that of any feature-length film. The culmination of their efforts is truly something remarkable, exceeding all expectations. It's something that you will have to see to believe. This footage will take you through the various technical aspects of Onimusha 3, Demon Siege. This time, the game takes place in both ancient Japan and modern France. Here we'll introduce the making of the beautiful backgrounds that the Onimusha series is known for. This game marks the introduction of fully polygonal environments into the Onimusha world and helps to make the game more interactive. Backgrounds are made up of polygons, elements that make up the shapes of objects and textures, elements that give objects color and depth. Texturing and lighting are added, making the backgrounds complete. Completed background models are loaded into the PlayStation 2, and the necessary special effects are layered on top. The source material for these effects may include real video footage hand-drawn images, or images created with special CG effects. Recreating natural phenomenon is a difficult task, requiring not only an artistic sense, but also an understanding of physics. Onimusha 3, Demon Siege, is capable of having approximately seven times as many characters on screen as before. In fact, there are times in the game when there are as many as 50 characters being displayed. This game uses a system called Level of Detail, or LOD, to make it all possible. LOD toggles the character display model depending on the distance from the camera, lightening the burden on processing functions by eliminating unnecessary drawing operations. Each character has two separate 3D models, high and low, and the game's program determines which model to display. Moving further away from the camera switches the model to a rougher version, and the processor load saved can be used to add more characters on screen. This technique is what makes these many large-scale battles possible. The simulations have also undergone a huge evolution. In Onimusha 3 Demon Siege, advanced simulators on each character are used for things like hair, clothing, and other small objects. All of this is controlled by special programs written by the in-house team, and it plays a big role in making the game look as realistic as it does. 
There is also an advanced program controlling the water effects, processing and calculating a number of factors in real time, such as transparency, wave motion, light refraction and sheen, and reflections of the surroundings. With the increased freedom to move the camera in true 3D, the director can give the cutscenes an even more movie-like feel. Here we see the motion capture process at work. The actors' movements are translated to the in-game characters and are combined with dramatic camera work to give the story more depth. Unlike a sword, the whips that Jacques uses are flexible and can be used to squeeze, grab, and shoot his enemies for a variety of attack combinations. The dynamic action is captured at 60 frames per second. The smooth movements are then manipulated by the motion design team. With superb editing features, the software technology literally lets the animation team's imagination run wild. The conclusion of this landmark Onimusha trilogy is grand indeed. It is the collaboration of an all-star cast of industry gurus and two top-notch movie stars. Takeshi Kaneshiro and Jean Reno. The result is an unprecedented video game achievement, an achievement that you will simply have to play to believe. Two heroes, one destiny. The Onimusha series has been incredibly successful. Let's take a look back at the first two titles in the series and see what makes them so popular worldwide. This is Onimusha Warlords, the game that started it all. It was a monumental title. By bringing in popular actor Takeshi Kaneshiro to play the main character, game fans everywhere were impressed. The story begins with Princess Yuki writing a letter to ask for help and Samanosuke rushing to save her. But with the demon army before him, Sumanosuke is no match, and Princess Yuki is kidnapped. Sumanosuke, on the verge of death, receives a mysterious ogre gauntlet from the Oni clan, capable of sealing the demons away for eternity. Using the power of the Oni, Sumanosuke sets out to battle the demon army. With beautiful, state-of-the-art CG, and a brand new approach to gameplay, the game ushered in a new era of adrenaline-soaked action-adventure. With even better graphics and more hard-hitting action, Onimusha 2 Samurai's Destiny cast the late great actor Yusaku Matsuda in the role of Jubei Yagyu. The revival of this living legend caused a tsunami of excitement. Jubei returns to his hometown, Yagyu village, only to find it in ruins. Before long, he learns that he has the blood of the Oni Ogre clan running through his veins, and that it was demon lord Nobunaga Oda that destroyed his village. And so he sets out to overthrow Nobunaga. This is where his adventure begins. Interacting with this interesting and unique cast of characters is one of the central parts of the game, making it enjoyable in more ways than just battling enemies. It is safe to say that this game established the Onimusha brand in the gaming world.
now the third game, Onimusha 3, Demon Siege. Onimusha 3 brings this epic story to a conclusion. Will the inevitable showdown between Sumanusuke and Nobunaga occur as the history books record, or will there be a new twist? You'll have to witness the end with your own eyes. Thank you.